Hello, and thank you for downloading Witness from the BBC World Service. It's 75 years since the bombing of the Basque town of Guernica during the Spanish Civil War. Simon Watts has spoken to one of the many children who were evacuated to Britain in the aftermath of the attack. It's May 1937, and Herminio Martinez is leaving his childhood home near the Basque city of Bilbao. My father took us to the dog side. The poor man, he was terribly, terribly upset and uh, just walked away rapidly. Herminio, then aged seven, and his older brother are being evacuated from northern Spain on a converted cruise ship. We were taken downstairs into what had probably been the dining room. We were sleeping on the floor. As we left, we encountered a storm, and with the rolling of the ship, everyone was sick and crying that they wanted the captain to turn the ship round to go back home, that they wanted to go back to their families. It was horrific. The evacuation was a desperate measure by the Basque government. The Basques supported the Spanish Republic in Madrid and their region faced an all-out assault from General Franco's fascist forces. Aeroplanes would come over the hillsides on their way to Bilbao to bomb. The war was in the air all the time. The hunger, I remember... The north of Spain was cut off. Food was um, extremely difficult to come by. The bread was awful, awful bread. The British government didn't want to help the Basques officially because its priority was to remain neutral in the Spanish Civil War. Instead, the reception for the Basque children was organised by volunteers, moved in particular by the brutal bombing of the town of Guernica, described in a famous report in the Times newspaper. At 2am today, when I visited the town, the whole of it was a horrible sight, flaming from end to end. The reflection of the flames could be seen in the clouds of smoke above the mountains from ten miles away. Throughout the night, houses were falling until the streets became long heaps of impenetrable debris. Because of public sympathy over Guernica, Emilio Martinez and his brother got a warm welcome when they and thousands of Basque children reached Southampton. Waiting at the quayside was the Salvation Army with a band and uh, with their uniforms. There was great excitement because, of course, some thought that this is how the people of England dressed. Uh, We were put into double-decker buses. I mean, I had never been in a bus in my life. And we were taken to a vast tented camp and, of course, It poured with rain. The whole place became a quagmire. Imagine 4,000 children trudging throughout the camp. So things were extremely chaotic. But I remember the voluntary workers, there were Boy Scouts, they were all from all sections of society. There was, I think he was a professional boxer who organised boxing matches. But, uh, of course, we would escape all over into the new forest. The police cars would drive around, picking up the children, taking them back to the camp, but all very good-naturedly. By summer 1937, General Franco controlled the Basque country. The new fascist authorities wanted to bring back the Basque children because of their propaganda value to the Spanish Republic. Many returned. Others, like Herminio and his brother, were moved to homes across Britain. We went to um, Cumberland. The uh, home there was uh, run by Lady Cecilia Roberts. They were wealthy landowners. They were wonderful people. She was a lovely lady. She would visit the home regularly uh, in her chauffeur-driven Austin 10. Uh, She was a buxom, big woman. When she got out of the car, all the children would run to greet her. And as she got out of the car, the car would heave up a sigh of relief, uh, having got rid of her weight. And there, basically, we were allowed to roam the countryside. There was a lovely teacher who had come over with us, Senorita Lolita. And, of course, we had, as far as possible, to be self-sufficient. So, Senorita Lolita organised dance groups, acting groups, um, a choir, 
So we used to tour local towns and villages, in a sense, singing for our supper. Emilio and his brother expected to be away for a few months, but the months slowly turned into years. They had little contact with their parents, and the news that did come was bad. Emilio's father had paid a heavy price for supporting the republic. We had a letter from our father, and my father could barely write. He wrote all the words linked together, and you had quite a job to find each word within the line. The poor man, he had been uh, initially sentenced to death. That was commuted to 30 years, and uh, at least we knew that he was alive. By 1939, the fascists had won the Spanish Civil War and the repatriations of Basque children were ending. Emilio and his brother thought they would be going back, but there was a hitch. The British volunteers learned that the fascists were repatriating some of the children without their parents' knowledge and then keeping the families apart. So when the volunteers received an application in the name of Emilio's parents, they double-checked it. The... Red Cross managed to contact our mother, who told them that she hadn't signed any form to reclaim us. She didn't want us back because our father was in prison and she had five other children. They were extremely hungry. If we went back, we would starve just like them. Emilio remained in London, and after struggling in his teens, he had a successful teaching career. He had to wait until 1959 to return to the Basque country. By this time, they had built a little stone house, very rudimentary, no water, and I realised what changes those years I had been away had worked upon them and upon me. We were so terribly different. They had suffered 23 years of fascism. The first thing that my family said to me, don't speak to anyone, don't trust anyone. Did it feel like, despite all the changes, they were still your your family? Yes, they were still my family. In fact... I was a very practical person and I would help uh, my father on the land. And um, my father at some stage said to me, Erminio, you are the son that is most like me. Erminio never blamed his parents for sending him away and the reunion made him realise that in a way he'd been given more opportunities in life. I had some wonderful experiences in Britain with all the problems and difficulties. Life had been fantastically interesting. But with all the changes we had, the one thing that started to come into my life was a feeling of insecurity. Uh, All this constant movement from one place to another, missing out on education, losing one's friends, created a feeling of insecurity that I feel even now. Now retired, Emilio Martinez still lives in London and he's passionate about Spanish literature and history. Simon Watts. This programme was first broadcast last year. For details of our complete range of downloads and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts.